Hi guys, so for your chapter 6 in the syllabus of your MKT 420, uh, the chapter in chap uh, for from the textbook will be in chapter 8 and also chapter 9. So uh, for this one, I will explain to you the first part of chapter 6, which covers chapter 8 in your textbook, yeah? Okay, so these are the learning objectives. We have four of them. First one, to define products and also describe the major classifications of products and services. Second, describe the decision companies that need to make regarding their individual products and services, which includes their product lines and also product mixes. Number three, to identify four characteristics that affects the marketing of services and additional marketing consideration. And lastly, to discuss some of the branding strategy. So let's look at the first learning objective, which is to define product and describe the major classifications of products and services. So what is actually a product? Uh, you need to know product could be anything yeah, that can be offered to a market for attention, acquisition, use or consumption that might satisfy a needle one. So bear in mind that product can be anything at all, right? So it can be a tree, it can be a grass because people sell grass as well. It can be sand, it can be a building, it can be, a, of course, your bag, your pencil, okay? Uh, and anything for attention, uh, could be just for attention, okay? Uh, but we normally don't want people to just get attention about the product that we are selling, but we want them to have the acquisition. Acquisition is basically uh, owning that particular product or buying, simply buying the product. Next is a service. What is a service? It is a product that consists of activities, benefits or satisfactions and that is essentially intangible that does not result in the ownership of anything at all. But rather, you go and experience that particular benefits um, of the service that you get, like when you go to a, a shopping mall, for example, a shopping mall itself does not really sell things to the customer. Shopping mall, for example, they provide a shop lots for the uh, shops to sell their products. So when you go to a shopping mall, shopping mall gives you the service or the environment or the ambience of the shopping experience that you can get. Other than that, uh, service also could include like when you go for a hair cart. Okay, you go for a haircut, so you don't own the scissors, so you don't own anything that belongs to the salon, but rather you um, benefit the activities of cutting the hair just now, and you get the satisfaction of a new haircut, right? So, what is a product again when you talk about product, services, and experience? Um, we can say that products and services are becoming more commoditized, commoditized in a way that you can consider them as having an industry by themselves okay so companies now are creating and managing customer experiences with their brands or their company so because um there are many products and there are also many services uh, so in one way that you can actually differentiate your product or your services is the experience that customer can get when they buy your product or their or, or your services so basically, each and every product consists of three levels. Okay, we start from the center here, which is the core customer value, which this is the most basic level of the company uh, asked to themselves, like what is the customer really buying here? So the customer core value is actually the benefits that they get when they buy a product. And then the second level is the actual product itself. So basically, this is the physical aspect of the product. And the augmented product, the third level, are those that are equipped or uh, bundled together with the actual product that you are selling. So take example of a handphone. So what is the core customer value of a handphone? So what will be the benefits that people will look for when they buy a phone? So basically, uh, when you want to buy a smartphone or a telephone, it is for communication. So um, the core customer value is, is that that particular phone will enable people to be connected or um, to be uh, communicating with other people. So that will be the core customer value. While the actual product is the brand name of the phone, the quality level, the packaging, the design, the features okay, of the phone itself. And the third level, which is the augmented product, includes the after sale services, the warranty of the phone, the support, and also delivery and credit of the phone itself. So um, this could be the example. You can just read through this in your textbook. 
Now, um, there are two classification yeah, uh, of the product itself. Uh, in broad, there are consumer products and also industrial products. So, um, there are four types of consumer product. Okay, the first one is convenient product, second is the shopping products, third is specialty product, and the fourth type is the unsought product. So, you can uh, look at this particular four types of product and the marketing considerations when deciding on uh, the customer buying behavior, the price that you want to put, the distribution strategy, promotion strategy, and of course, you can see examples here. So, convenient product basically are frequently purchased product. Okay, and you conveniently will get it everywhere because normally the price is very low. Okay, and it's available a lot of location, and there are mass promotion on the produ uh, by the producer because there are many competitors here of this product because it's so convenient. So, for example, the toothpaste, a magazine, or a laundry detergent. Well, the second type of consumer product is the shopping product. Now, shopping will require less frequent purchase um, materials yeah, or at items, which you will actually do some planning and also have some shopping efforts, which you need to do some comparison of the brands on the price of it, the quality, and also the style that you would like. So normally, it is higher price than the convenient products. Uh, in terms of the distribution, uh, it will not be able, available everywhere. Okay, but in a selective distribution, which in a fewer outlets, which typically it will be in a shopping mall because of the name itself shopping, right? Uh, and it's also in the departmental stores, like in the Parkson, in, uh, I don't know what other departmental store that are available in Sarawak here. We have Parkson. Last time we do have Metro Jaya. Okay, uh, but basically you can tell that these uh, shopping products are uh, normally in the shopping mall itself. Okay, uh, example is like the major appliances, okay, the television, the furniture, the clothing, all right. Next is the specialty products. So specialty products has a strong brand preferences and loyalty where um, you will have or require a special purchase effort. Normally, you will go through the five steps in the consumer decision making process, right? And the price are typically very high, okay? And it has an exclusive distribution, which typically it is sold in a boutique, yeah? Uh, in terms of the promotion, uh, it is more carefully targeted promotion to the target markets yeah for example luxury goods such as rolex watches or a fine crystal like uh, pandora okay so typically things that are considered as specialty products are more expensive and you normally will not accept uh what they call it uh substitute brands because you already have your own uh strong preferences towards certain brand and become loyal okay the last or the fourth types of the consumer product is the unsought product. Unsought product comes from the word, uh, the one that you don't look for, okay? Not seekable or uh, it is seekable, but then you don't really look forward to buy things, all right? Which normally it has a little, uh, you have a little awareness about the product or knowledge about the product. Or even if you, let's say, you know about the product, but you are not interested or you have a negative interest towards the product, okay? The price can vary, could be very high or could be very cheap, okay? Distribution also depends, okay? Sometimes it's available everywhere, but sometimes it is not available everywhere. Um, in terms of promotion, yes, because it's an unsought product, typically the promoter or the manufacturer will actually have the ag aggressive advertising and do a lot of personal selling, all right? So, for example, like the life insurance or the Red Cross blood donation. Other than that, um, you don't really look forward to buy first aid kits also, isn't it, or fire extinguisher. Um, first aid kit actually available a lot of places, yeah. But then you don't really want to buy it. You go to Watson, you just buy things that you want to buy. But when you see a uh, first aid kit, you don't see there is a need for you to buy it, right? So that is an unsought product. It could also it could also include like a coffin, you know, or a pre-planned funeral package. Like you don't actually tell, okay, I want to buy my own. Uh, coffin lah, later on when I die so that I have a coffin. No, you don't actually think about buying it unless you are really, really sick and the doctor said you only have one day to live. So, 
then you would actually go and find coffin for yourself. Okay, but typically the unsold product are things that people don't look forward to buy. Uh, life insurance, however, uh, getting more uh, demand, yeah, because of course with this COVID nineteen kind of thing, uh, people are start to th started to think about what will happen to them or their next to kin. Okay, so uh, it is actually widely available in all the banks, right? Life insurance. Okay. So um, the classification just now, again, it is here, convenient shopping, specialty, and unsought. I've explained that to you. So this is more uh, explanation of it. And also examples, you can just read through. This is shopping products, the specialty products, OK? So it also includes those uh, high-end electronics, yeah? For example, your iPhone. So iPhone could be a specialty product because, um, you know, you will need to uh, you will not accept some substitutes of other phones if you are an Apple user, okay? Designer clothes like Louis Vuitton, Prada, uh, Savato Ferragamo, Dolce & Gabbana, all those uh, designer clothes are considered as specialty products. It also includes like um, uh, a wedding gown, for example, because it is only exclusively sold in that kind of boutique, okay? So that is considered as a specialty product. Could also include like um, some skincare products yeah? like a Mammon or um, SK2. These are actually a specialty product. And lastly, the unsought product. Like I told you just now, some funeral funeral pay services, okay, blood donation, life insurance. Okay. Next one, remember just now I told you there are two major categories, which is the consumer products and the industrial products. So in terms of industrial product, these are those products that are purchased for further processing or use in the uh, business. Yeah? So it includes materials and also parts, capital items, supplies and also services for the usage of the business. So when you talk about material and part, it includes the raw materials manufactured materials and also the parts. Capital items include the industrial product that aid in the buyer's production or the operations, which includes the machineries, okay, the technology. Um, and lastly, the supplies and services include the operating supplies, okay, like cleaning, servicing, uh, repair services, okay, and so on. All right, next we will look at um, another classification of product, which is organization, persons, places, and also ideas. So remember, these are also uh, products, yeah? So there are uh, strategies that we can do in the marketing, the organization, person, place, and also the social. So in organization marketing, it consists of activities undertaken to create, maintain, or change the attitudes and behavior of target consumers toward an organization. So basically, you are doing marketing to uh, create a good image and also acceptance of public towards the organization by uh, showing that the organization is actually a very good, high quality, and trusted organization. Yeah. Next is person marketing. This is from the word person itself, meaning to say you are doing the marketing activities towards uh, particular people. So normally, it's the uh, there are the key people or the key management uh, people or the board of directors or the CEO, okay? Normally, the top levels of management lah in the organization so that people will actually have a good image towards that particular person. For example, um, when uh, AirAsia is doing a lot of, um, what they call it, well, marketing towards Tony Fernandez, okay, it's to show that how Tony Fernandez is actually a, a, a good person, okay, as a person itself that actually um, navigate and also manage a very good company like AirAsia. Next is place marketing, which consists of activities undertaken to create, maintain or change attitudes of or behavior towards a particular place, okay? This is towards place. Normally, government will do this uh, towards the tourism industry in certain places where it actually built a very uh, good image towards a place like Kuala Lumpur or Malaysia itself or even Sarawak, okay? And lastly, the social marketing, which uses commercial marketing concepts to influence individuals' behavior to improve their well-being uh, and also that society. Social marketing is basically uh, to to create what they call it is the causes, yeah, a good causes, or what they call it to um, 
make people change like for example now with this COVID-19 right there are a lot of social marketing related to um, campaign asking people to do social distancing uh, always sanitize their hand wash their hands with the soap okay uh, that is actually social marketing which um, the uh, concept here is not about a product but rather to improve the well-being of the society itself all right, next we move on to the second learning objective, which is to describe the decision companies make regarding their individual products and services, which include their product lines and also their product mixes. Okay, so uh, each company, uh, when they create a product, okay, or when they come up with their product decision, they first will think of their product attributes, okay, which what will be the most important thing that the product can actually give to the customer. Next. After they have the uh, product review, then they start to do the branding, okay, of the product, and then design the packaging, do the labeling and logo, and then also later on decide on the product support and also services that they will offer to the customer when they purchase the product. So um, when they do this, uh, what they call it, product decision, yeah, they need to communicate and deliver benefits. Remember the core customer value just now in the first few slides that I told you, okay? So they need to tell the customer what will be the benefits that the product and also service can give to the customer. It could be in terms of the quality of your product, the features that you have, and also style and as well as the design. Well, when you look when you look at the product quality, of course, quality is very subjective. But it could be uh, referring to some characteristics of a product or service that bear on its ability to satisfy stated or implied customer needs. This could include you are doing this total quality management, return on equity, looking at the quality level, performance quality, as well as the conformance quality. While product features could include something that is considered as different, okay, why you call it the competitive advantage or something that can differentiate your product from the competitor's product, which normally assessed by the value to the customers versus its cost to the company. Next, when you talk about the style and also design, style itself will describe the appearance of the product, okay, while design contribute to the product's usefulness as well as to its look so style for example when you look at iphone 11 uh, pro max for example so the appearance of it which includes uh, the shape of it that uh, slick design the color of it that could be the style while the design uh, could include um, how smooth is the surface of the uh, product itself okay the the screen uh, sensitivity all right so those are actually the design that contribute to the usefulness okay as well as the look of it so then you have the brand all right after you have decide on the product itself you start to decide of the brand so the brand could include the name all right the term or a sign or even the design or you can even use a combination of this all right that identifies the mark the maker or the seller of the product or service okay for example when you have the phone the smartphone uh, apple produced their smartphone so they don't call it apple phone they call it iphone right so iphone is the brand for apple that is the name with the um the sign of apple and apple yeah a shape of the fruit apple that is uh, have been bitten right so that is actually the brand itself okay Next is talking about the packaging and also labeling. So the packaging involved designing and producing the container or even the wrapper of the product so that you can actually make sure that the product is uh, safe and also secured in the box. Like for example, the iPhone just now, right? And then the labels include the uh, to identify the product brand and also some description about the attributes and is also in, uh, involved providing the information and uh, some promotion because some labels are very colorful and nice okay so look at this particular picture for example the box itself right the box is actually the packaging which on the packaging it involves the labeling okay so you have the brand this is actually the the uh, what i call it the symbol or the 
uh, mark of Amazon, right? Then you have the brand here with some information of this uh, barcodes, right? And some safety pictures to say that, okay, this is the way up, okay? How to put this thing, uh, how to uh, move this particular box. So make sure this thing, um, this part is on the top while this part is at the bottom. So these are actually uh, the function when you put your product inside then people will know how to handle the packaging because you can see the labels and lastly you will create the product support services okay which remember the augmented uh, actual products which includes some uh, letter of a uh, letter of appreciation or a warranty letter okay or a warranty card normally they say that so that you will know that when you buy this particular product you can actually get some support or services after sales services if you have problems with the product it could also be the assurance yeah uh, when you purchase the particular product then you have this particular letter or a card to assure you that you have made a good decision uh, to assure you some of the brand quality or product quality that that particular uh, company promise to the customers okay next we move on to the product line decision so what is actually a product line product line is a group of products that are closely related because they function in a similar manner and they are sold to the same customers group which are marketed through the same types of outlet or fall within a given price ranges. So in the product line decision, you may want to look at the product line length. Okay, the length could be whether you wanted to stretch it, stretch meaning to say you're going uh, horizontally, okay, or line filling meaning you are actually filling in the line uh, vertically okay look at this example bmw so bmw they have many types of vehicles yeah they have let's say saloon car mpv suv and bmw also have a big bike bmw also have a, another type of vehicles lah, right so those uh, different types of vehicles is when you have the line stretching meaning to say they add another different types okay um which can be categorized into different types of car. Then when you talk about line filling, for example, the SUV model. So SUV model, under the SUV type itself, there are many other um, vehicles that are considered as SUV for the BMW. So you have the X5, X6, X3, X1, and whatsoever. Those are SUVs under BMW. So those are line filling. So the more X, 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 SUV that you add on in this particular uh, category of uh, SUV for BMW, that is what we call the line filling. Next is the product mix decision. Now, when you talk about product mix, this consists of all the product lines and items that a particular seller offer for a sale. Okay, you can uh, look at the decision within uh, whether you want to have a very wide width, okay, a very long length or a very deep depth or when you talk about the consistency of that particular product mix itself okay uh, if you want to look at the example of BMW just now so uh, all the items sorry all the cars that BMW sell inclusive of the uh, bike just now uh, and whatever SUV model the saloon model the sport model and so on those are everything that the BMW cell consider as the product mix okay so they can actually uh, make it wider okay longer in terms of its length deeper or, in, or even make some consistency about their product mix itself okay Very, another good example is Colgate because you have so many types of Colgate right or not uh, so those are actually all product mix and they even have let's say total protection 12 hours right so under that total protection 12 hours then you have all those uh, for um, whitening uh, for stronger teeth for uh, I, i'm not sure is it bad breath kind of thing for freshing and so on right so those are under total protection then you have another colgate which is uh, opti white right so there is another line under colgate so um, that particular opti white they have 
uh, opti white shine opti white oh, whatever whitening and so on right so those are actually considered as the uh, product line for the opti white colgate okay so you can actually go to Colgate website and see a lot more uh, types of products that they have and also the mixes of the product that they have. Okay, next we move on to the third learning objective, which is to identify the four characteristics that affect marketing of services and the additional marketing consideration that services will require. So this is basically towards uh, services yeah just now are more towards the product those are the tangible product now we're talking about the uh, intangible product the aspect of the service now there are three types of service industries okay basically they're the government itself the private which is not for profit organization and another one is a uh, profit organization or what they call the business organizations Okay, so in marketing your service, okay, you need to know there are four service characteristics, which is intangibility, which includes the services that cannot be seen, tasted, felt, heard, or smelled before the purchase. Second one is variability. This is from the word uh, variety, yeah, variability, which the quality of service depends on who provide them and when and where and how it varies you cannot say that the service is always uh, consistent or always standardized or always the same like when you produce product from the factory because factories uh, products are made in factories are made by machines so machine can actually produce exactly the same or identical to another but uh, services are produced or are made by human being and as a human being you cannot guarantee that every time you make the product it will be exactly the same like the previous one just like when you cook your own nasi goreng for example today you cook your nasi goreng it is, and it is so nice okay and tomorrow you decided to cook again somehow or rather tomorrow's nasi goreng may not be as nice or could be nicer than yesterday's nasi goreng okay so that means it always depending on who provide them or where you provide them and when and how okay next one it is inseparability which you know it is not separable meaning to say services cannot be separated from their providers and lastly services are perishable perishable because you can't store for later sale or use you cannot say okay i want to have a haircut today but then I want to have my car, uh, my hair cut tomorrow. Uh, then you go to the salon and they say cut my hair tomorrow. Okay, so you, it cannot happen like that. You have to have it has to happen simultaneously. As you consume the service, you are paying for that service at the same time, and it is not something that you can store it. Okay, uh, marketing strategies for service firms. Yeah, in addition to the traditional marketing strategies, the service firm often will require additional strategies, which include uh, the service profit chain, internal marketing, and the interactive marketing. What is service profit chain? It links the service firm profit with employee and also customer satisfaction, which include the internal service quality, uh, the satisfied and productive service employees. It's important here yeah, because um, service profit chain meaning to say that you can't actually just uh, get the profit based on the selling of the service because profit will come when there are many sales all right sales of the service who provide the service the employees right so that is why um, your service employees is very important in making profit to the company and offer a service a greater service value um, have a satisfied and loyal customers as well as healthy service profits and growth meaning to say you will be able to see not healthy person yeah healthy service profit and growth meaning to say the um, services that you are offer is actually uh, still on demand all right and growing not something that service that people no longer wanted to have uh, a good example that service that no longer or may not uh, actually come into demand anymore is printing um, photos okay like who print 
uh, pictures nowadays when you can upload your pictures into your virtual album like in your Facebook your Instagram right so uh, those companies uh, like Kodak or Photoshop yeah not Photoshop the, the the software or the application yeah no the the shop that print photos okay uh, they they may have uh, de decrease in their sales and also the service because people no longer actually keep a physical album okay today because everything is going uh, paperless and you have that virtual album that you can share with the whole world right rather than you just put it in your own personal album and keep it at home right so there is no healthy service profit and growth so very uh, healthy service profit and growth which shows that the product or oh, sorry the services are uh, on demand still on demand and growing the demand is growing okay and people are demanding for that particular service more and more so this figure shows the three types of service marketing yeah the internal marketing interactive marketing and external marketing so let's look at it Internal marketing means that the service firm must orient and motivate its customer contact employees okay, and supporting service people to work as a team to provide customer satisfaction. So internal marketing means that you must make sure that your the whole organization, yeah, especially the people who uh, directly communicating or delivering the services to the uh, customers, they provide the best and also they are uh, because you are giving a service right you have to be a friendly uh, it has to be informative and so on a good example like in the bank all right when people go to the bank they will meet the uh, people at the teller okay or uh, the employees of the bank they will give them information they will advise them on some of the services that the bank offers so these are the customer contact employees the bank employees while supporting services people could include the security guards okay if you go to a bank if me personally I go to the bank uh, I will be feeling safe if I see there is a, a security guard because um, they are not actually giving me anything other than they may ask you um you they see boram bloom or they sometimes are very not friendly isn't it right but then i don't really bother because there are security security guards but um towards that particular service employees or the people at the bank itself the bankers right they are giving me uh, very good services okay and I feel satisfied if they don't give me a good service or they don't really treat me well then I will not feel satisfied so in doing this internal marketing you must make sure that you have to tell all the employees that re, uh, giving the service directly to the customer make sure that customer are satisfied including the security guard so that's why at certain banks like Maybank for example the security security guard is quite um friendly okay so that's at the affin bank but uh, i see the security guard at bank islam they are not really friendly even bank riot also they are not really friendly but i don't really bother because i don't really go to that bank okay so then it's about internal marketing next is the interactive marketing which means uh, service quality depending heavily on the quality of the buyer seller interaction during the service encounter Okay, this can be done using service differentiation, service quality, and also service productivity. This interactive marketing includes like during it happens, yeah. For example, when you go to a restaurant and you want to order food, okay. So um, this buyer seller interaction during the service encounter should be included, like how the waiter or the waitress treat you when they take your order, okay. So some service differentiation can be done is that instead of giving giving you the uh, menu on a paper or a booklet menu what you can do is actually by giving uh, give you the ipad if you go to soul garden for example i think soul garden yes they will give you an ipad for you to just choose whatever menu that you want and then you can actually directly order that which that particular order will link directly to their kitchen okay so that is an interactive marketing right where it offers something different rather than you, the waiter will wait for you and then you will choose whatever you want and tell the waiter then the waiter go and tell the kitchen right so that is one way that you can provide differentiation so less 
uh, interaction with the waiter because sometimes whatever you say to the waiter or the waitress, then they write something else. All right, then you uh, get something which is different than what you ordered. After that, you feel dissatisfied with the shop or uh, with the restaurant. Okay, service quality, uh, how good the quality of the service could include like how friendly is that personnel, right? How uh, informative they are when you ask them question, they are able to tell you the answer precisely and with a very nice tone and warm, not being cold. Okay, like, huh, kenapa? Or like, mm, mm, something like that, you know, with your face some more. So that is not a very good service quality. So in having this interactive marketing, it's important to make sure that the, uh, what I call it, activity or the interaction during acquiring the service, you feel you are comfortable dealing with that particular person. Like when you are having a massage, for example, some people, um, the massage, yeah, they like to talk to you when you are having your massage uh, service. So for me, for example, if I am at that particular place and I'm, I went to the spa, I want to relax. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to sleep and my body is being massaged. Well, uh, some masseurs are actually very talkative. Okay, They like to talk about things. They like to talk to you. And you can't even relax because you have to think when you talk. right? Or not. The reason you go to a spa is for you to relax. So that is one of the example of the service quality that is uh, important for the sellers to know what customer want. Okay, or even when you go to a saloon, for example, some of sometimes you're so bored, you know, by looking at the mirror in front of you, and then you read the magazine, which is actually two years ago magazine, not the latest one. So you feel bored. So it's fine if let's say the uh, the one that your hairdresser talk to you. Or if you say that you feel that you don't want to talk to the hairdresser, you can just uh, put on your, I don't know, your phone. But I don't think it's safe to use your phone while having your hair cut. Try not. Okay? Unless it's your AirPods, lah, the wireless one. Okay? And service productivity, of course, productivity is very much related to how fast it can be delivered. Okay? Of course, you don't want to wait for so long. Let's say you go to the bank and then you take your number. Your number is 90 current number is 10 so you have to wait for another 80 people so that is not productive okay so it is good that when uh, we, you take your number now num your number is 90 current number is 89 so you have to wait very short time so that could be productive all right Next is managing service differentiation how do you create differentiation just now it's like by offering something that is different Devel delivering something different or having a very good image that will actually make people feel that it is a privilege or is something that is uh, not privilege a uh, prestige for them when they go and have the service at your place okay in managing the service quality it will enable a firm to differentiate itself by delivering consistently higher quality than its competitors that provide the same services it can uh, be doing using this uh, productivity, which refer to the cost side of marketing strategy for the firm services. Yeah, like oh, you employ your employee hiring and training kind of uh, thing, and also service quantity versus the service quality. Okay, so it's not necessarily have to have a very uh, what they call it in terms of number. In the services, you don't really want to count the number, but rather the quality that you deliver. Lastly, uh, in this uh, chapter is on the branding, yeah, branding strategy. So let's look at how the companies can decide in making and building, uh, also managing their brand. So there are two aspects of brands, yeah, uh, in building a very strong brand, which the first one is the brand equity and the second is the brand value. So what is brand equity? It is the differential effect that knowing the brand name has on customer response to the product or its marketing. While well, brand value is the total financial value of a brand. So brand equity basically how popular is your brand? While well, the brand value is in terms of financially, how much your brand uh, costs or the, the value of your brand. So um, in this particular building a strong brand, 
the major brand strategy decision include you do your brand positioning, uh, brand name selection, brand sponsorship, and also brand development. So uh, brand positioning includes, uh, remember you have learned this in uh, positioning strategy, it's the same thing, okay? When you talk about the attribute, the benefits, belief, and also the value of the brand. Next, uh, selecting the brand which um, you need to select and also do protection over your brand. Next one, talking about the manufacturer brands or private brand, licensing and also co-branding. This is when you talk about brand sponsorship and then lastly the brand development, meaning to say you want to develop an extension of it, uh, a line, a brand extension, a multi-brands or even a totally a new brand for your product. So again, you can do brand positioning using some, some attributes or some benefits and also beliefs as well as the value. Like when you can see this one, Mickey Mouse, right? Mickey Mouse is a brand from Disney, yeah? which has become a love marks, uh, products or services that pack an emotional wallop and inspire loyalty beyond reason. So um, you can see that even though Mickey Mouse or even Disney, yeah, because his first product or first uh, cartoon was uh, this Mickey Mouse. Uh, even though Mickey Mouse has been for many years, I think it's about 100 years. So people still recognize and people still know about this Mickey Mouse. Yeah, That is how uh, it gives impact towards people with the beliefs and also the value that Mickey Mouse actually gives. Because Mickey Mouse is seen as some one or some cartoon that is so loving and also lovable. All right? And cute of course secondly when you do a brand name selection okay brand name selection includes with this that brand suggests benefits and the qualities of it of course you may need to consider that particular brand is easy to pronounce uh, recognizable and also easy to remember of course it has to be different than the other extendable translatable for the global economy uh, before that when you talk about this extendable a good strategy that iPhone, sorry, Apple did was putting I on every brand that they have, okay? I Mac, iPhone, I Watch, I, what else they have? Uh, basically, with that I kind of thing, yeah? And then they have the uh, Mac, MAC, yeah? uh, products, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, Mac TV, and so on, all right? So that is when the brand is actually extendable. And translatable for global economy in a way that it means or it can be pronounced and it means the same from one country to another country, especially when you talk about countries with different languages. Okay. Uh, and lastly, it's a capable of registration and legal protection in all places because you don't want to have that brand only available in Malaysia. But then when you go to overseas or other places, that brand is actually another product. Okay, so that is uh, not a good strategy in brand selection. Okay, moving on to the third one, which is the brand sponsorship. When talking about brand sponsorship, there are four types, yeah, which is manufacturer's brand, private brand, licensed brand, and also co-brand. A manufacturer brand is basically the brands that are from the manufacturer or the producer itself, while private brand are typically the store brand. Okay, the shop brand. Well, licensed brand are companies that produce a product with permission of using other people's brand name. Okay, and a co-brand meaning to say you use two brands uh, in one product. In this particular last slide, all right, you have the brand development strategy. Okay, when doing this, you may want to look at if the brand name and also the product category. Oh, by looking at whether, okay, you want to have an existing one. So this is the first quadrant, existing one. Okay, product category, you can do a line extension, okay, with existing brand name. Uh, for example, when Apple produce iPhone, okay, so the brand name existingly, they have iPhone, right? Uh, category also they have the phone itself so when they do that particular new products they do this uh, new brand extension with uh, the numbers okay they use numbers iPhone 4 5 6 then they have 6s 
or 7, 8, 8 plus. Uh, they don't have 9, right? No, they simply skip the number 9 with some other reason which I don't know. There are many rumors saying about why there is no iPhone 9. So um, that is when they do uh, using existing one, but then they create the new product okay or new brand extension okay well uh, when you have a new brand okay which you may use multi brands okay for example again iPhone when they create their new uh, what I call it uh, I watch for example okay so that is a new brand watch that they create right they use same I but then they add the word watch right to their brand Okay, so uh, many um, organization, they might just use a new brand or it could be just an extension of that particular brand itself. Okay, like Colgate, for example, they will add on some, they use, they remain the word Colgate, but then they will add another uh, words like total protection, total white, uh, opti white Colgate, you know, they do have that kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, like the automobile industry, for example, Toyota. So Toyota, they have the name itself Toyota with multi brands. Yeah? Uh, the new products that they produce, they will always have that new uh, name like Toyota um, Vios, Toyota Camry, Toyota, um, what else? Huh? Toyota, Altis, is it? And so on. Okay, so those are new brands that they create from the new products that they have with multi brands. Okay, so with that, we, fin we finish the first part of chapter six and we will continue later on in the next video.